The epic journey into the Dalek universe begins here with Dalek Universe 1. This is the first of three sets starring David Tennant as the Tenth Doctor, which sees the Tenth Doctor taken out of his own time into a period before the last Great Time War, where the Daleks were still running riot. Essentially, what this series of adventures is, it's like the Tenth Doctor is taken out of his own new series and placed into the classic series because there's a quite a few elements which link very much into the classic series. This is the first time that Big Finish has brought the Tenth Doctor out of his own comfort zone because he's had his own series of fun adventures with Donna Noble and Rose Tyler in the first three volumes of Tenth Doctor Adventures but now this is it. This is Dalek Universe Anything can happen. As ever with these reviews, I'm going to go through the amazing cover art for these CDs. I like to collect the CD sets, so I wait to get the CD and then I review it that way. So it might be a few weeks or so after the title is officially released to the public as a download. I will go through the presentation, I will talk about the three stories and each of the sets and then I will round off the sets as a whole. So before we do that, if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome to subscribe for many more Doctor Who content including all of my Big Finish reviews. You shall also see a link to all of the Big Finish reviews that I have done previously. And now, without further ado, let's take a look at this amazing box art for Dalek Universe 1. So this set stars David Tennant, Jane Slavin and Joe Sims. Just see the names at the top there. We have the Jodie era Doctor Who logo. We have a very nice font for the title of the series, Dalek Universe 1. And we also get a whole range of other actors who are lending their brilliant voices into this. So we have Mark Gatiss, Kevin McNally and Gemma Whelan, and we also have Nicholas Briggs voicing the Mechanoids. Also note on this front cover, there is a lack of Dalek action, and there is a reason for this. I will go further into that in this review. On the front cover, we have the Tenth Doctor in his blue suit. We have Mark Gatiss, who plays one of the characters in this. I'll go further into detail about him. We have Jane Slavin as... And your kingdom, and we also have Joe Sims as Mark Seven. We also have a mechanoid there, and we just have all this alien environment in the background. You can see what seems to be like a alien planet there. We have pterodactyls. We have a futuristic city, and just all around, it looks like they are on an alien planet. And honestly. This is a very nice front cover indeed. If we just take a look at the top of the box, it tells you what this is. So Doctor Who, Dalek Universe, we have the awful BBC logo there as well. We have all of your legal stuff at the bottom, tells you the runtime. So overall, this box set is 240 minutes, and this includes the behind the scenes uh, documentary, which is on the fourth disc. Here we have the spine with the Tenth Doctor, looks very nice on the shelf and again just tells you the title of the box and it says at the bottom there, Big Finish, We Love Stories. And here we have a roundup of what this box set is all about as well as the titles of the three stories in this set. We have Buying Time by John Dorney, The Wrong Woman by John Dorney. And finally, to round the set off, we have The House of Kingdom by Andrew Smith. This whole set was directed by Ken Bentley. And if you want to read your synopsis, then you can pause the video now. And here are your three stories. Let's take a closer look. With Buying Time, we have a lovely front cover with the Tenth Doctor and Joe Sims as Mark Seven. And it looks like they're in some sort of forest, which makes sense because this takes place in this forest. This story also features Mark Gatiss and Gemma Whelan. Overall, very nice front cover. We'll take a look at the back. It actually gives you more information about this uh, 
individual story as well and the runtime for this is approximately 60 minutes so what you're getting is essentially like a massive three hour story along with an hour long documentary on disc 4. Have a look inside you have the first disc as well as a reversible cover and you have more details about the cast and a little bit about behind the scenes and some nice artwork inside this leaflet. Have a look at disc 1 must say, these artwork for these discs is just phenomenal. I think Big Finish are just getting better and better. We have a advertisement behind the first disc, and it is off the Ninth Doctor Adventures Volume 1 Ravages. I have done a review of that, so check out my review of that set starring Christopher Eccleston. Next up, we have The Wrong Woman. This cover is really nice as well. I love how the Tenth Doctor is in the shadows in this one. We have Mark Gatiss, who plays the character of Shell Drake in this. He's appeared in quite a number of Big Finish audios, as a lot of you are probably aware of. We have the amazing futuristic city in the background, and we have quite a few things which are out of time. It's quite similar to what happens in ravenous in a way i'll go into more detail about that we have dinosaurs we have planes we have romans and lastly we do have anya kingdom there you can also see a hologram of sheldrake industries which is this guy there is your overall plot for the wrong woman and again inside you have your reversible cover with the tenant era logo and there is this two. We pop this two out. We have an advertisement for the first three volumes of Tenth Doctor Adventures. And the last one is the House of Kingdom, which features the mechanoids. Very nice front cover with the Tenth Doctor and Anya there. We have the crashing escape pod just there in the background. And once again, the front cover is very nice. We also have a plant just behind the Tenth Doctor. Something I've only just noticed just now. What I really like about each individual cover is they are all unique to one another. They don't all follow the uniform. It gives a uniqueness to each of these three stories in this set. There's your plot for the House of Kingdom and again you have your reversible cover and in this case we have two CDs so we have this three which features the House of Kingdom and then finally to round everything off we have a disc 4 which is the behind the scenes disc for Dalek Universe 1 and we have an advertisement for the recently released The Tenth Doctor and River Song. Review of this coming soon. I had a lot riding on this box set after it was officially announced last year because with the Tenth Doctor and Big Finish, right? Don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed all of the audios that he's done so far. Um, but none of them have really been masterpieces like what some of his TV stories are. Basically, quite a few of them are quite safe. So, when this got announced, I thought, right, this is... Big Finish now taking the Tenth Doctor in a completely different direction. It is Special Zero Tenth Doctor, um, and of course you can tell loads of stories with that particular era in the Tenth Doctor's life because we only had four stories, the 2009 specials and what have you. So I think. Big Finish really hit the nail on the head with this release as well as Out of Time because it allows us to see the Tenth Doctor nearing the end of his life but still having some adventures. Alas, he is on his own. He doesn't have a full-time companion. But you could argue with this series of sets that Anya Kingdom is his companion as well as Joe Sims as Mark Seven. Anya Kingdom, of course, was a previous companion of the Fourth Doctor. So we have quite a few tie-ins to the eighth series of Fourth Doctor Adventures, which came out a few years ago. This also ties in to the prequel, which was released alongside this, which was the Dalek Protocol. If you want to learn a little bit more about that story, 
then check out my review of that that I did quite recently in a run-up to reviewing this box set. As a character, Anya is quite complex. She's lost quite a lot and we get to learn a lot more about her, especially in the third story in this set, The House of Kingdom. She's been fighting Daleks for a very long time and she's also changed sides now and again and there are parts of this story where I do feel should we really trust Anya but I think for the most part I think she is someone we can trust and I think the whole Doctor Companion dynamic between Tenant and Slave in here does work quite a bit due to that distrust because the Tenth Doctor remembers the events of the Fourth Doctor Adventures Series 8. She betrays him, she pretends to be someone else, but of course she was under mind control. Speaking of characters who were under mind control in previous adventures, we also have Joe Sims playing Mark Seven. I absolutely love Mark Seven as a supporting character. I think Joe Sims provides a great voice talent for this guy. I just really like him. He's quite handy in tough situations. He's an android, so he's more tougher than you think. But he's not your typical android. I will say he's a much better android than someone like Chameleon from the Peter Davison era. Let's just forget about Chameleon because yeah, I just thought it was crap. Androids with the human aspect, I think, work better in pop culture in general. That's just my view. Whether you want to call Sheldrake a villain or not is up to you. He's a very similar character to the character of Audrey in the Ninth Doctor Adventures. And that way he is a entrepreneur and he wants to do these experiments with time in order to make profits. But there are a few cataclysmic events that he causes. I see there being quite a number of similarities between this box set and Ravagers, which I don't know if it was intentional. There were different writers writing on this set than Ravagers, so I'm not, I'm not sure. But it's not a criticism of the box set, and overall the whole thing with time is not the overarching theme of this set and I don't think this is what the overarching theme will be of the entire saga as a whole. It is mainly the focus of the first two stories in the set. The one that feels separated from the others is the last one. Story by story in this set, each one offers something unique. I think buying time is a good way to start things off. We get to establish the characters. We establish that the Tenth Doctor doesn't have a TARDIS, doesn't know what is going on, and neither do we as a viewer, because the Tenth Doctor has been well and truly taken out of his own comfort zone. He's been taken out of his own time. He's no longer in those familiar surroundings. I think in buying time as an individual story, it doesn't blow you away as per first openers of other box sets that Big Finish have done. Like with Dark Eyes 1, we had The Great War, which was a really, really strong opener for that whole saga of adventures. With this, I do think it's really good, but I think it is just a character piece which sets up your characters builds up the relationships as well as establishes what this whole box set is going for. We get to have the whole arc of Sheldrake being discovered for the first time. We get a couple of other characters who pop up in there who do appear in this story as well as the second story, The Wrong Woman. But I think the main thing to take away from this is it is very good writing. I've said before in previous reviews that John Dorney is a very, very good writer and I really do wish that he did write a story or two for the new series as I do feel that the TV series lacks a little something what he gives to the Big Finish universe of Doctor Who Adventures. 
The big talking point about this story, and I guess the box set as a whole, is a cliffhanger which occurs at the end of this. Now, if you don't know anything about this cliffhanger, then all I'm going to say is, spoiler alert, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get off this video if you have not listened to this, because I'm going to delve a little bit into spoilers because it relates to the second story in this set. Alright, so for all of you still here, then you will probably know that there is a shock regeneration at the end of Buying Time. This blew me away. I thought this was one of the best Doctor Who cliffhangers of all time. I'm not even kidding. I absolutely loved this, and my jaw dropped when this happened because it just came from nowhere. I was really enjoying buying time, as I've just said. I thought it was really nice what was getting set up for the entire box set, but then the story went from really good to just like an entirely new level. I had my head in my hands, so I've got to congratulate John Dorney for making me feel happy. And honestly, this story provided one of the best cliffhangers in years. The Tenth Doctor is shot twice in both hearts and he regenerates at the end and he regenerates into a woman and this new incarnation of the Doctor is played by Gemma Whelan. Before listening to this set I was aware that there was a massive cliffhanger but I had no idea that it would be this. I had ideas what it could have been but I wasn't even close. I thought that the Doctor Who community did a very good job overall of keeping this cliffhanger quiet for a lot of people who haven't listened to this yet. To my own knowledge, I've not seen any reviews of this set talking much about the cliffhanger other than it's a very good cliffhanger. They've not gone into specifics about what it is, but I'd like to go more into it because I think that the second story really shines because of the conclusion of the cliffhanger. The title character of The Wrong Woman is essentially Gemma Whelan's character. She is taking on the role of the Doctor, she takes control of the situation. The adventure just carries on and I'm thinking what on earth is going on here because we all know that this isn't meant to happen. We all know that the Tenth Doctor isn't meant to regenerate here. Of course it becomes very clear halfway through that this whole regeneration, it was a complete fake out and the Tenth Doctor is actually being held captive inside a TARDIS. That's right folks, there is another Time Lord in this story and this is another thing which blew me away and the other Time Lord is actually the Monk and this Monk is played by Gemma Whelan. Gemma Whelan's Monk is pretending to be the Doctor and I absolutely love it. Big Finish have explored the character of the monk quite a few times through the years with different actors taking on the role as different incarnations so I think Gemma Whelan's character is a nice addition to the overall legacy of the monk who was originally played by Peter Butterworth during the Hartnell era. Whelan's incarnation offers something new. I love her wit but at the same time, I appreciate how she doesn't like the Doctor one bit. We get references to when the monk has been left trapped by the Doctor as punishment for meddling in time. I suppose if you've listened to previous Big Finish audios featuring the monk, then I think this carries a lot of weight into The Wrong Woman because if you've listened to those and you know the whole history between these two characters then I think it really does make sense how Gemma Whelan just ends up despising the Doctor because at the end of the day the Doctor has done really bad things to the monk as punishment for changing events in time but at the same time as that the Tenth Doctor has lived through the Time War, so he's lost so much. We get a subtle reference to the loss of the Master at the end of Series 3, 
and just to all the people that he has lost during his life, such as Rose Tyler, we actually get mentions of things that have happened throughout this incarnation's life. Honestly, this adds so much to the story, and I just love things like this. This is something what I've wanted Big Finish to do for quite some time now, and I'm really glad that they finally delve deeper into this, how the Tenth Doctor is feeling. In this, he's finally given a little bit of hope in this, because he discovers that there is another Time Lord, but of course, this Time Lord is before the era of the Time War, so the Monk has no knowledge of this Time War. But that doesn't matter to the Doctor. Seeing him sort of happy about it, but at the same time not so happy, it really adds a very interesting dynamic. And I think the chemistry between Tennant and Whelan in this is just so spot on. It is easily the highlight of this set for me. I really love the interactions between Anya and Mark Seven in this as well. But I feel, just for this box set alone, I think the addition of the Monk was very, very clever. And it really made me do a double take. John Dorney did a masterstroke with this, and I really wish, again, we got more things like this in the new series, week in, week out. The Wrong Woman as a whole does continue the whole plot from buying time so essentially what this is it's like part two of a story the first two stories in this is like a two-parter and John Dorney himself even said he wanted to make the opener of this feel like a two-parter he wanted to make it feel like a series finale and honestly he did that we also get a little bit of explanation as to why the Tenth Doctor was taken out of his own time and placed in this time I think all of that was really well handled. I like the whole resolution with Sheldrake at the end of this as well because Sheldrake, of course, he's threatening all life in time and space because of his old experiments. He does get stopped at the end and I just like how, because he is so rich, he thinks he knows everything, he's one of your corporate people, I like how... He is foiled at the end and he's either going to get arrested or he's going to be broke. And I just love that. I love how it's going to be one way or the other, but he's going to lose. If only this happened in real life. As I said earlier, Sheldrake is very similar to Audrey in The Knife Doctor Adventures Ravagers because you have a corporate, rich, powerful person who has got the hands on these space and time experiments but everything is going wrong. The two characters you could say do have similar goals but in terms of personality I think one of them is likeable but one of them is not. I don't know if anyone else has picked up on this but I just think that there's a similarity between that aspect of the two sets. But overall, it doesn't take away from the experience you find with Dalek Universe 1, or indeed, the Ninth Doctor Adventures Ravagers. The end of The Wrong Woman leads very nicely into the last story of this set, The House of Kingdom, because we finally get the appearance of a Dalek. You know, those guys? Because this set is called Dalek Universe 1. We haven't had Daleks yet, and a Dalek does turn up and basically ruins everything, and puts the Doctor, Anya, and Mark Seven in a dire situation. I love the Doctor's attitude towards this Dalek because from what is implied in the audio, this Dalek is a classic era Dalek and if you've seen the artwork for the upcoming Dalek Universe 2, then you'll see that the designs in those stories will be the death to the Daleks design. And that makes sense seeing as the Dalek Protocol, which is the prequel to this, was a sequel to Death to the Daleks. I'm rambling, I know. Point is, the Tenth Doctor realises that because he is in a period of time before the Time War, the Daleks are still about. This is during the Dalek Wars. This is during the times of the Daleks Master Plan and this is what gets explored further in 
the final story, The House of Kingdom. The House of Kingdom I really like because it didn't have to be a masterpiece. I think that the best story in this set was The Wrong Woman, hands down. I think that The Wrong Woman was actually the best story to feature the 10th Doctor so far on Big Finish. I thought it was that good. The House of Kingdom is a little bit more laid back because all it does, I think, it just explores the characters further, especially Anya. This is Anya's story in this set because we've learned quite a bit about her in the first two stories, but I think in the third one we really do get a lot of backstory about where she come from and why she does what she does for a living. We get to meet her father who is played brilliantly by Kevin McAnally who of course is familiar to many Big Finish listeners so it's great to have him on board for this set. We're getting the mechanoids in there and the mechanoids in this one of them's like a pet. I quite like that because I think it adds something new and interesting to the whole lore of the mechanoids. The mechanoids have got a lot of love recently in Doctor Who because of the Daleks animation that came out last year and with them appearing in this set as well as the River Song set that came out recently I think maybe we should have more stuff around the mechanoids in the future because the mechanoids are quite a weird yet wonderful creation that featured in the chase way back in 1965 and it's nice to see them come back for the story the level of authenticity with these guys provided by the voice talent of Nicholas Briggs is also really nice to hear. Later on in the story we hear many more of these mechanoids and they're just doing the usual stuff with the flamethrowers trying to kill everyone and it offers a really nice climax to the story and indeed the set as a whole. More spoilers but Anya doesn't really get on with her father because from what is alluded to he basically sold her mother out to the Daleks. The Daleks exterminated her. We also get a mention of Sarah Kingdom and Brett Vian. so fans of the Daleks Master Plan who are listening to this you get a lot of references to that story which I think is great. Now I did say that her father was the villain of this but in retrospect what he did, he did because he thought he was doing the right thing and the Tenth Doctor actually says this in this audio. We have a really nice heart to heart between the Tenth Doctor and Anya and he's trying to see both sides of the story. He knows that she's angry because of what he did but at the same time he did it because he might not have had any other choice. At the same time though the experiments that he conducts in this story are something which makes you think the other way and you think oh actually this guy is quite flawed as a character. I think Kevin McAnally does really pull it off with his performance because you want to sympathize with him but then when you find all the other stuff out later in the story with the experiments that he's been conducting with this plant life you think, oh, why? These plants have these evil spores and upon contact with humanoids it makes them develop an evil personality which is why towards the beginning of the story we have someone wanting to kill the Doctor, Anya and Joe Sims and we get that brilliant sequence with them going into the escape pod and then the escape pod crash landing because the spaceship is shooting after them and stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff that does go on in the House of Kingdom I will admit. But it all ties in very nicely and I think that the last act of the whole story with Anya's father becoming murderous due to the plant is quite heartbreaking. He seemingly dies at the end of this and at first Anya just sort of brushes it off because as we know she doesn't really get on with her dad but you can hear in Jane Slavin's performance that she's hurt by it and that for me is something which I really love about Anya as a character and I'm really looking forward to seeing if we get more of this development coming into the second box set in Dalek Universe. The story ends with the Doctor, Anya 
and Mark Seven escaping, but then Mark Seven ends up wanting to kill the Doctor and Anya, and it leaves this set on a really nice and intriguing cliffhanger going into Dalek Universe 2. I'm really intrigued as to why Mark Seven all of a sudden wants to kill them. Is he under mind control from the Daleks again? Well, I guess we'll have to find out in Dalek Universe 2. Dalek Universe 1 had a hell of a lot riding on it, and it delivered. It actually exceeded my expectations. My expectations were very high for this set. In fact, it might have been even higher than my expectations for The Ninth Doctor Adventures Volume 1. Because we've had The Tenth Doctor at Big Finish for a few years, but now this was truly the first time where Big Finish did something incredible with The Tenth Doctor and took him to new heights on audio. David Tennant is phenomenal in these stories, it just goes without saying, and I've got to commend the rest of the cast in this. Jane Slavin, Joe Sims, absolutely perfection. Mark Gatiss is not in this all that much, but he is very good as Sheldrake. And Gemma Whelan. Wow. Gemma Whelan. That's all I can say. Gemma Whelan. She was absolutely incredible. It was great to have the, her part of this ride. And I would very much like to see her reappear in future and Big Finish box sets. Possibly alongside the likes of Missy in her own series. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? The scary thing about this set, though, is the fact that there's a lack of Daleks that are in this. In all honesty, the Daleks are in this for seconds, and it's only at the end of the second story. They're not in the first one at all, and they're not even in the third one at all. The fact that I really, really enjoyed this set makes me wonder... What on earth are the second and third sets going to be like? Because if you know me, you will know that I love Daleks. Now those sets are very highly anticipated. I cannot wait to see what happens next. And I just cannot wait to finally hear the Daleks enter this saga. This set is just utterly brilliant. I love it. You are in for three hours of excellent audio drama from Big Finish. And also did I mention that all the direction and all the sound design, all the music, you know the drill, all of that is just on top form as per usual. I'm just so excited for the next two sets in this now. But for now, I leave you with my highly recommended Dalek Universe 1. An absolute must for any collectors of Big Finish audios. Buy this set because honestly you would be missing out if you didn't. This set did everything I wanted it to do. It propels the 10th Doctor to new heights on Big Finish and it does so much more. Thank you so much for watching my review of Dalek Universe 1. Stay tuned for my reviews of Dalek Universe 2 and Dalek Universe 3 coming later this year and as always take care and I shall see you next time